take a second and talk about the biophotonic scanner because a lot of, most of us never heard of this thing. But it's been out for a long time. The science behind it uh, has actually, this Raman spectroscopy, uh, won a Nobel Prize back in the 1930s. So the science has been around for a long time. The technology just wasn't advanced enough to, to catch up with it. But now it has. If you've ever watched a CSI program on TV, and they're analyzing stuff, and they're trying to get to the original color of the fabric in this car or this whatever, and they do this, that's, this is the test they're using right there. The exact test, because they go back and they, because of the colors, they have different frequencies. These nanometers, they use these optic signals, can figure out the original color of that fabric. So this science has been around a long time. University of Utah just used a different application. They were studying age-related macular degeneration. Where's the highest concentration of antioxidants in your body? Your eyes. Why? Sunlight, right? Oxygen going right straight in. I mean, so the highest concentration of antioxidants in your body is in your eye. They started wanting to understand why, people, why certain people had macular degeneration and others didn't. So they started looking at antioxidant, carotenoid antioxidant content in the macular of the eye. All right? And they found that those that had high levels of carotenoid antioxidants had no scarring of the macular, therefore no macular degeneration. Those that had low antioxidant levels had what? Macular degeneration, the leading cause of blindness in the United States, just in case you didn't know that. And we've got members, we've got clients here that have that problem in their, in their 50s. Young people. All right? So it's the Nobel Prize winning science. Uh, it's the world's first measuring device using this laser type technology to, buy, to provide a, a immediate reading of antioxidant scores in your body. It's validated by more, eight, by more than eight peer reviewed studies and it's established uh, and used in over 4,400 different medical journal articles. They are used, this is becoming the number one way in terms of measuring and evaluating antioxidant status in the body over blood serum testing, which is a good thing. Um, but it's validated science, it's real science. Now, what is your score? Uh, why is your score, your skin carotenoid score important? All right, we've talked about this. Carotenoids are a powerful antioxidant and key indicators of the entire antioxidant network. <clears throat> They're your first line of defense in this whole battle. The carotenoids are what protect these guys. Okay? So the more carotenoids, remember, they can take multiple hits. So get a vision in your mind of a battlefield. And you've got this battle. And back at the very back, you've got the cell, the king. Alright? And that front line. The foot soldiers in this battle are the carotenoid antioxidant network. That, that group is the first line of defense. They're taking multiple hits before they're, they're killed off. As they're killed off, as those carotenoids get weaker, then allows these free radicals to get into the next wave. Well, where do they go? They then start attacking these guys. Well, they can't take those hits. They don't have seven and eight in them. They've got one. So these things can die out pretty quick if they're not being protected by the carotenoid levels. So if you want to protect, and these guys will replicate each other if they're given the right nutrients. If they're not, they don't do it. And you're left with nothing. And now all of a sudden the free radicals have, they're going right to the cell and starting to damage the cell. Alright, so the greater the concentration of carotenoids in your body, the greater your level of overall antioxidant protection. They, they have proven this in scientific independent studies that if your carotenoid levels are up, then all your antioxidants are up. Because they protect the big guys. Standard American diet, that score is 17 to 25,000. What does that mean? Oh, I'm a standard American. Well, sometimes that's good, sometimes it's not. In this case, it's not so good. One in two Americans currently are dying prematurely from cardiovascular disease, and one in 2.4 are developing some type of cancer. Those are not good odds. If you look around this room, you can put those odds in perspective. Now, you're different than the majority in terms of exercise, but are we different in terms of what we eat? Yes, I exercise, but then I go out and have a great big old whatever it may be, you know what it is. Hot dog. Hot dog. Okay, let's go to Snoopy's. 
I, you know, so again, I put myself in a better place because I exercise, I watch my weight, I'm doing certain things, but then I turn around and slam a bunch of garbage in and I expect to get some kind of different result. You know, insanity is doing the same things over and over again and expecting to get a different result. If you keep doing the same habits that got you unhealthy, guess what? It's just like, this aggravates me about our current system. I go with my mother or my uncle and all these folks that have died from lung cancer in the last couple of years, and I hear the same thing from the doctors. Well, all you got to do is eat right, so go out and drink some Insure. I want you to put you on a high-protein diet, and I'm going to get you on high sugar, and, I want you, and you're going to be eating right, and you're going to fight this cancer. I look at the doctor and I said, let me understand this. You are a doctor at Duke University where they said that one of the ways that they can detect cancer is to put in a bunch of sugar. Because sugar lives, I mean, cancer lives off of sugar. So, you can actually help determine where the cancer is by injecting sugar in certain areas and you, because the cancer cells will migrate and be stimulated by that sugar. And then you're going to prescribe to my uncle, to my mother, Pure sugar in the form of insure? What sense does that make? Where they, you know, they can't deal with it. But you can't, a doctor said it, so you can't get this person that just heard those words from their doctor to change. So they go out and do the worst possible thing for fighting cancer, and that is load in a bunch of processed garbage. So, again, you know, we don't want to be in the system. There's things wrong with it. We want to be here. Optimal, 40,000 and up. And the way we can, we, we've done it close to 20 million scans worldwide. That is a lot of data. There is more data on this scanner, on that scanner, than any other medical device that I know of. Because it's out in the field every day scanning people. So, we know that worldwide, if a person is in the 40,000 category, they tend to have less frequency of the age-related diseases. If they have them, they're much later in life. People at 50,000 and up are at an optimal level. Okay, so that's our goal. The highest score ever recorded is 197,000. So we got room, don't we? We got, hey, look at that, 197,000. You know, the highest score I've had is 85,000. Well, look at that compared to that number. Is that a human 